Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at types of radioactive decay. So let's get into it. Now, we've already seen what radioactive decay is in a previous theory video, and remember it's when an unstable nucleus will try to become more stable by emitting an alpha particle, beta particle, or gamma ray. And we're going to go on and look at the three main types of radioactive decay here, which are alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay. So if you look here, it says we can use nuclear equations with the isotope symbols seen earlier to describe radioactive decays. So remember we saw the symbols for isotopes that we can use in the theory video on isotopes, where we have the element symbol, the mass number, on the top left and then the atomic number on the bottom left. And we can use these symbols to create what we call nuclear equations so that we can describe radioactive decays and see what's going on in a reaction. It then says in all nuclear equations, both mass number and atomic numbers, so that's your A and your Z, are conserved, i.e. the total numbers are the same before and after the decay. So remember, mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus and atomic number is the number of protons only. So this number is said to be conserved in all nuclear equations. It then says the original nucleus is called the parent nucleus and the products produced in the reaction are called the daughter nuclei. And this will make a bit more sense when we go on and look at nuclear equations. So we'll start here with alpha decay and it says that in alpha decay, an alpha particle is emitted from the nucleus of an atom. Since an alpha particle is a helium nucleus, it consists of two protons and two neutrons. So imagine this is the nucleus of an atom and it's emitting an alpha particle like this, the two protons and two neutrons. Then that is called an alpha decay, a nucleus emitting an alpha particle. It then says for an original parent nucleus undergoing alpha decay, its mass number will decrease by 4 and its atomic number will decrease by 2. And if we think about it, we'll see why this is the case. So remember mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So if we're losing an alpha particle from the nucleus, which is made up of two protons and two neutrons, then that means that the mass number will decrease by four because this is contributing four to the total mass number. So we're losing four from the mass number. And remember the atomic number Z is the number of protons only in the nucleus. So if we've got two protons and two neutrons here in our alpha particle, then that means that the atomic number will decrease by two because we're losing the two protons. So it's really important for you to remember that in an alpha decay, the mass number for the parent nucleus will decrease by four and the atomic number will drop by two. And in nuclear equations, you'll be able to identify an alpha particle because it's represented by the following symbol, the element helium, HE, with the mass number four and the atomic number two. And that's because remember we said an alpha particle is the same as a helium nucleus and it's made up of two protons and two neutrons. So the mass number must be four and the atomic number must be two. So if we see this in a nuclear equation, then it suggests that an alpha decay is happening. For example, let's say our parent nucleus was uranium-238 and this decays by alpha emission to give thorium-234. Then you'll see we have the uranium-238 here and then an arrow to show what is produced in the reaction and we then have the thorium-234 here plus the alpha particle, helium-42. So because we can see an alpha particle in this reaction, that suggests that this is an alpha decay going on. And lastly, it says to note that the daughter nucleus is that of a different element. So here's our parent nucleus, which is uranium, and then we have the daughter nucleus here, which is thorium. And we call it the daughter nucleus just because it's the one being produced in the reaction. And there might sometimes be more than one daughter nucleus. I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualize an alpha decay. So if we look at this top one here, we've got a nucleus emitting an alpha particle. And it tells us that alpha is a helium nucleus, the symbol is helium-42. Moving on, we have beta decay. And it says that in beta decay, a neutron decays into a proton and electron and antineutrino. The electron is fired out of the nucleus as a beta particle, whilst the proton remains within the nucleus. And you might remember we've actually seen this already in the particles and waves topic when we looked at the theory video for leptons and neutrinos. And we talked about the discovery of the neutrino through this thing called beta decay. And what we mean by beta decay is really just the emission of a beta particle, i.e. an electron. So in the nucleus of an atom, the neutron will be converted into a proton, but the electron will be fired out of the nucleus. And we say that for an original parent nucleus undergoing beta decay, its mass number will remain unchanged and the atomic number will increase by one. And remember the mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So if one of our neutrons is converted into a proton, then that mass number will stay the same. Whereas the atomic number will increase by one because we've gained a proton from the neutron being converted into the proton. So although we've lost a neutron, we've gained a proton and therefore the mass number will stay the same. And the number of protons, which is the atomic number Z, must increase by one. And it says that here. So A, the mass number stays the same since the total number of 
protons and neutrons is unchanged, a neutron is lost but a proton is gained. And it says the atomic number Z changes by plus one since an electron is lost from the nucleus, or you could think about it as the proton is gained in the nucleus. So rather than thinking about it as gaining a proton in the nucleus, which is going to add one to the atomic number, you could also think about losing the electron, which is losing a negative charge from the nucleus. And therefore, it's like the nucleus has gained a positive charge by losing a negative charge. How do we represent a beta particle in nuclear equations though? Well, it says in nuclear equations, a beta particle is represented by the following. So we have the little symbol E for an electron, zero for the mass number, and minus one from the atomic number. And we've got this negative one because we're saying that in a beta decay, if we lose an electron from the nucleus, then the atomic number, i.e. the number of protons, must increase by one. And therefore, if we lose something that has a negative one on the atomic number, then that's the same as gaining one. So for example, here we have lead 210, which decays by beta emission to give bismuth 210. So here's our lead 210, our parent nucleus, and this is producing bismuth 210, but you'll see the atomic number has gained one here, plus we've got our beta particle, our electron. And remember we said that in any nuclear reaction, mass number and atomic number must be conserved in the reaction. They must be the same on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of these reactions. So since the mass number is 210 on this side, we want the total on this side to equal 210 as well. And it does so because we saw that the mass number was unchanged. 210 plus zero gives you 210. And we also say that the atomic number must stay the same as well. So on this side, we have 82. And if the proton number is going to increase by one, then that means our beta particle must have minus one for the atomic number so that we get 83 minus one to give us the 82, which is on the left-hand side. So remember, we want the total numbers to match up. And it says to note again that the daughter nucleus is that of a different element. So we started with lead and we ended with bismuth. So there's our parent nucleus and there's our daughter nucleus and our beta particle. So just be aware that if you see this thing in a reaction, it just means a beta decay is going on. And I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this. So we're focusing on this middle one this time, a nucleus emitting a beta particle. And you'll see the electron being fired out of the nucleus there. Jumping back to the notes now, we're on our last type of decay, which is gamma decay. And it says in gamma decay, a high energy electromagnetic wave is emitted from the nucleus of an atom in an attempt for it to become more stable. And here you can see the nucleus emitting this wave, this high energy electromagnetic wave. And it says for an original parent nucleus undergoing gamma decay, its mass number will remain unchanged and its atomic number will also remain unchanged. And this is because there are no particles entering or leaving the nucleus. So because we're talking about waves here, the mass number and the atomic number will stay the same on both sides of the reaction. And in nuclear equations, we can simply represent a gamma ray as just the gamma symbol. And that's because the mass number and atomic number are unaffected. Now I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualize the gamma decay. So we're focusing on the bottom one this time at a nucleus emitting a gamma ray. So you'll see it's sort of vibrating there, it's shaking, and that's showing that it's unstable, and then it's emitting a gamma ray there. And it tells us that gamma is high energy radiation, and the symbol is gamma. So just to summarize, we can look at all three at once here, if I click play on all of them. So you'll see our alpha decay there, our beta decay, and our gamma decay eventually. So let's just summarize the effects on the mass number and atomic number for each of these types of decays. So remember the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. And we said that alpha decay will cause the mass number to decrease by four, and the atomic number to decrease by two. We said the beta decay will cause no change to the mass number, but will cause the atomic number to increase by one. And lastly, we said that a gamma decay will cause no change to the mass number, and no change to the atomic number. So I'd recommend learning this table because it can help you when you're looking at nuclear reactions and nuclear equations. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.